Hi everyone, uh, this is Ruben Kim. I'm one of the deans at uh, PTSA. And we have a special guest here today, Pastor Joshua Chang, who just finished uh, CPE. And I'm very, very proud of him. Joshua, tell me uh, what CPE stands for. CPE stands for Clinical Pastoral Education. And after you're done with CPE, what uh, usually is the course after that? Um, so it depends on what you want to do with your CPE experience. Um, but say you're trying to go down the chaplaincy route, a lot of people will usually go on to uh, start uh, what's called a board certification process. And that's where you just get certified and uh, established. And like there's like a group of professional chaplains that just recognize you as a chaplain. So there's a whole process to that as well. Oh, I see. So reason that we're uh, talking about chaplaincy and reason that we have uh, Joshua here today is that our school, PTSA, is uh, initiating a chaplaincy pro program starting this fall, uh, fall of 2022. So uh, we want to just let you know what this program is about and uh, just uh, found out from Joshua uh, how, he, how his experience is with this program. So Joshua, uh, so what was uh, your motivation in pursuing the chaplaincy program? Prior to me doing the whole CP experience, I was uh, currently, I was serving as a youth pastor. And one of the things that kind of got me just even aware about the whole chaplaincy world was I had a few people going through like a series of losses mm -hmm. in their lives. And I think I recognized that as a youth pastor, I didn't have like a familiarity with uh, death and bereavement and how to like counsel people uh, through that process. So I took a class at Talbot, uh, which was another seminary. Uh, and um, I, I, I took that class and I recognized just how valuable it is to learn how to uh, the whole model of like chaplaincy is like to come alongside people, mm -hmm. um, just to be able to sit with them in their pain, not hurry them through, not just throw theology at them, but just learn how to care for people. And I felt like that really uh, fitted with the way I like to do ministry. I, I, I like to counsel people and I like to kind of sit with people. So I think as I learned more about it through that class, um, and as I even took classes through CPE, I, I, I felt like more and more chaplaincy was something I wanted to do. And that's how I kind of got introduced into it and how I kind of ended up staying around. Oh, that I was see. the motivation. I see. So you just took one class at Talbot, correct? Yeah, that class uh, helped me to familiarize myself with like the whole process. And then I started the CPE process. So uh, the program that we're starting in uh, our fall 2022 is... Uh, you could actually do what Joshua did after graduating from seminary Why are you attending our uh, seminary of PTSA? Mm. Uh, so you could do this uh, mm. while you are uh, doing the seminary work and after that you could go right into the process of board certification. Mm. You did it after the uh, mm -hmm. uh, seminary program, right? Mm -hmm. So if we offer the program to students those four CP units mm -hmm. during the seminary program uh, what advantage uh, would you see and what disadvantage, if any, would you see? I'll start with like a disadvantage. Yeah, like yeah. Maybe like, okay, honestly, like if there was a disadvantage, it would be that um, maybe it would be like having to juggle between the different workloads mm -hmm. would be, uh, maybe that would be the only thing I could foresee. Okay. Um, just because usually with CPE, like you tend to have clinical hours as well mm -hmm. as like the education process. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's a little bit to it. Um, but advantage, I feel like a great advantage would be that you would have um, supplemented theological training and a place to process um, while you're going through this experience. Uh, just because uh, I think chaplaincy in and of itself, it's, it's becoming an interfaith setting. A lot of hospitals and a lot of like the chaplaincy world, mm -hmm. they really want people to be inclusive of all faiths all uh, sexual orientations, mm. you know, they, they really want you to be a comfort. They don't want people to feel uncomfortable. Yes, yes. So sometimes if you're a believer, you have to really navigate mm. 
mm. uh, how you stand on these things. Okay, okay. So having this place to supplement mm -hmm. your training, I feel like would be a very invaluable. Okay. And also time-wise, you'll be saving a lot of time if you're doing the uh, uh, seminary yeah. along with a CPE at the same time. How long did yeah. it take you to do a CP finish the CPE? The CPE process took about a year and a half. Okay. Of just uh, and I didn't, there were a couple of times where I had to take breaks. Mm -hmm. um, but in order to become board certified, mm -hmm. you do have to uh, have an MDiv yes. equivalent. Yes. So it would save a lot of time to be able to kind of knock out yes. two birds with yes. one stone. Yes. So what, what did you learn through a CP class? What is the most important thing that you learned through those CP classes? Oh man, you learn a lot. But <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> just, uh, just one or two things. If I could take away and wrap up my entire CPE process, uh, you learn one, like you learn kind of like the whole clinical setting of things. Mm, you learn see. how, in particular, I was working in a hospital, mm -hmm. uh, and that's where you usually do your CPE credits. You learn kind of how to like work alongside like nurses, doctors, and you learn particularly what chaplains do in the medical field, like okay, particularly okay. what types of visits to show up to, um, how do you respond to these types of calls? Like, and you get very familiar with the whole. Um, you're one of the staff okay. when you're a chaplain, okay. and you're you're, you're serving uh, the patients and the staff there. So you okay. learn that. Mm -hmm. um, but and another and very invaluable part of CPE would be the fact that um, with chaplaincy, you really have to learn to become aware of yourself. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot of personal and spiritual formation. I see. Uh, you familiarize yourself with your past mm -hmm. and how that affects the way you respond to people. Like a example would be like, say you enter into a room and you're constantly nervous and constantly trying to like think about what the patient might be thinking about you mm -hmm. because you're like, oh, am I a nuisance? You know, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever. And you at, during CPE, what you do is you kind of go into your, your, your history, your mm -hmm. family history, and you understand why do I feel anxious? I see. Because I see. when you want to go into a room, you basically want to be as comfortable as possible. Yes. You don't want the patient to pick up on your things. You want to be there for the patient. So you do a lot of that personal work as well, too. Okay, okay. So would you say even after you finish the CPE, uh, if one does not go into professional chaplaincy, would you say this will be really beneficial to your ministry in general? Oh, hands down. Okay. Uh, I mean, I'm so I'm a I'm a youth pastor right now, and um, a lot of my students, yeah, are like, they've said that I've been like really helpful for them. Oh. So they've really oh. like I think yeah personally I think it's not just bereavement like you mm -hmm. just learn to show up for people. Yes, and I think uh, sometimes we have a tendency to just kind of throw like theology at people mm -hmm. when they're going through hard times, but. Mm -hmm. When you learn the principles of chaplaincy, which is to just show up, be there, learn how to just sit and come alongside people, mm -hmm. I think people really val uh, value and appreciate okay. that. Okay. Yeah. Wow, that's awesome. That's awesome. So uh, what was the average time you spent uh, in a CP classroom and, and you know, corresponding uh, like a field work? In... Each semester is like roughly 16 weeks each unit. Okay. Um, and there are about four units. And then we spent about 300 hours of clinical work. In my per semester? Per semester. Okay. So that means like every week, like 20-ish hours or so, okay. we'd be on the floors mm -hmm. uh, doing chaplaincy work and just showing up as a chaplain. Um, and... Uh, and then every week, we had about seven-ish hours of mm. class week, uh, class work. Okay. And okay. during that class time, what you would do is you would kind of debrief mm -hmm. your clinical experiences, learn about different, um, learn how to respond to different experiences, and just kind of overall like work through like how to be a chaplain and how to show up better. Mm -hmm. as you kind of deal with like your real life experiences. Wow, so this is really uh, intense, but at the same time beneficial. What was the most rewarding ex experience so far if with, when, when you went through the CP uh, mm -hmm. experience? Some of my most rewarding experiences, um, it's funny because it's like, you know, you're never really having like a party when you're meeting somebody in the hospital. Yes, yes. Um, but 
I feel like one of the most rewarding aspects of chaplaincy and then the whole CP experience is, um, I think, uh, especially as a believer, you want to show uh, God's love and compassion mm-hmm. to people. And having people uh, express on numerous occasions, like, they felt really hurt or mm-hmm. they haven't been able to share this pain with anybody and they're just so thankful that somebody was there to listen and to be with them like it really i really find the work meaningful and i really find the work um it helps me to feel like i'm living out my calling I as see. a believer so mm-hmm. um i find that very meaningful about the job okay and what is your most hardest experience Um, Be honest. <laughs> well, it's when I just kind of experience like the burnout okay. of like compassion fatigue where I you're see. like constantly caring and you mm-hmm. have a lot of stuff going on in your own life. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I had to, I'm still figuring it out. I'm still learning. How do I care for myself? So mm-hmm. I don't run into that because mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. like you can run into compassion fatigue anywhere. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, but so that was difficult, like navigating that. Um, And it, it wasn't like it was like that every single time, but you just kind of have to learn how to like navigate the ebbs and flows of yeah, life. Yeah. Um, so that was a challenge. Um, another challenge was uh, preemptively thinking through uh, how I would respond when, say, like a same-sex couple might mm. be asking for prayer mm. or um, somebody is... Uh, obviously not a believer mm-hmm. but then like you know on their deathbed like how do you respond to those things yeah, yeah, and it really yeah. kind of keeps you on your like theological toes so yes, to speak yes, yes. Um, and you just have to kind of work through like how do I stand yeah, as a yeah. chaplain in these things sure, so sure. those are it, I wasn't it wouldn't necessarily be negative things at all yes, but it yes, was yes. just challenges that yeah, I'd have to yes. kind of like think through and I would think as you uh, work uh, more and more hours and years your experience will build up and then you'll be uh, better at it as time goes on I guess. oh absolutely yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah you definitely as each challenge happens and you kind of work through it as uh-huh. sucky as those challenges might be to face like you kind of like you kind of like level up as yes, a chaplain yes, yes. so to speak yes, and then you yes. kind of like get a little bit more experience and you kind of like oh I would respond this way the next time that rolls around mm-hmm. so it gets yeah. Better. What would you say to the new students who are pursuing uh, this chaplaincy program, uh, CP classes? I would say go in open-minded. Mm-hmm. Um, if you are going in like on an agenda to be like, I got a Bible thump and like I got to make sure that like all these unbelievers, because you'll be working with like non-Christian chaplains. And if you're going in like close-minded, like antagonistic, I I won't learn anything from anybody else. Like mm-hmm. I think it'll take away from the experience. Okay, okay. Um, so I think being open-minded is a good uh, tip, okay. and also just uh, just getting out there and trying it. Okay. Like I think it's gonna benefit you no matter what. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. What do you think about this program being a? Uh, Uh, embedded in a in a master of divinity program. I know you kind of answer that. If you had a choice of doing this, uh, would you do this, or would you wait until uh, after the um, you know seminaries is done and then do yeah. it separately? Well, if I say I went back to being yeah, yeah, a seminary yeah. student, yeah, yeah. I would have totally done it that way. Okay, because okay. then it's almost like practically you're kind of knocking off two birds with one stone. Mm-hmm. Um, and you get like this space, like I said, to kind of like process. Yes, yes. And I feel like that would be very helpful yeah. um, through the CPE process because not only will you be kind of like thrown into situations where it's like, oh, it's unique and different and mm-hmm. um, it's, it's not familiar with like my church setting, um, you get to have this place where you can debrief it and kind of work it through theologically. So I thought, it, I think it'd be great. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, a lot of uh, uh, seminary students work at church mm-hmm. while they're doing uh, seminary work. And, yeah. you know, no one kind of imagined themselves working at a hospital. Mm-hmm. Like, a, yeah, so that was, I think that would be a really, really good and nice experience. Yeah. And that's a totally different experience that you would have advantage over, you know, other I guess regular seminarians. So uh, yeah, yeah. 
I mean, I really envy you, man. I really envy you. <laughs> you know, you worked at the church and working at the uh, hospital. So, yeah, so you'll be, I, 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 I'm sure that as you do your ministry, it will be really, really beneficial for you and uh, it will benefit your ministry greatly. Yeah. yeah. Tell us uh, maybe a last comment to the students who are uh, kind of thinking, oh, maybe I, should, I, should I do this or should I not? And uh, even they're not doing the chaplaincy, you know, would you recommend them to take this as a like an elective course and, and, yeah. and experience it? Like I said, like my calling has always been to be a minister. And um, even though I've entered into like this world of chaplaincy, mm -hmm. like I feel like my desire to be a minister of God has, it's still as strong as ever. And I feel like I, I hands down say that chaplaincy is like what I've learned from the whole CPE experience mm -hmm. has supplemented and strengthened um, my calling as a believer. Mm -hmm. I feel like I've learned how to care for people in ways that I didn't really quite do before. And, um, and you know, if you really want to be somebody that helps lead people to the truth, when you really like supplement that with like learning how to be compassionate and alongside somebody, I really feel like you give them a bigger picture of like what Jesus did. Mm -hmm. And so I think regardless if you go into like chaplaincy or not, I feel like it's just a really great way to learn how to uh, be a holistic minister. Mm -hmm. And it'll, yeah, it'll, it'll show up in your ministry for mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. And if you can show up for like the plethora of, different types of people that you experience in a hospital, like you can show up for like a lot of people in the yeah, that's church true. because yeah. you just get all types of experiences. Yeah. You're not like so boxed into one type of setting. Yes, yes. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Joshua, for coming for interview. And uh, as we start our new program, we're really, really excited. And maybe uh, uh, some of you will join us in this new program uh, so that we could uh, train you to be a, like Joshua say, as uh, uh, better minister, minister of God as you uh, study MDiv and also uh, chaplaincy CP classes together. All right. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you for having me. Thank you.